Um, so we have to look at the electron transport chain. Um, it's hilarious. <laughs> I very much like it's it. Goofy. It's kooky. Kooky and goofy. acid cycle and gly glycolysis and the um, prep reaction and the citric acid cycle. We have a bunch of these electron carriers here. So makes it a little less crowded. So what are we going to do with these things? What are we going to do with these electron carriers? Well, they come to the electron transport chain. Pretty simple. Let me throw some hydrogen ions around. You all know that hydrogen ions are present anywhere where there's water? Yes. yes. Water molecules will spontaneously break apart, and some hydrogen ions will just be floating around. So these NADHs, let's start with the NADHs. They simply come here to the first protein in the electron transport chain. There's many proteins right next to one another. And the NADH drops off their electrons. And it also drops the proton off. And the electrons move down the chain. They bounce from one protein to another. And the reason why they're moving is because every protein that's adjacent to the next one the electrons can get a little bit closer to the nucleus of the atoms. Electrons want to be at low energy levels. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Maybe in chemistry you talked about electrons wanting to be at lower energy levels. Well, these electrons, when they, when they drop off, they're at, they're at first at higher energy levels, but if they move there, they can get to a lower energy level. And if they move there, they can get even lower. And they're even lower. Sometimes in a diagram, they'll show this like electrons falling down stairs. It's almost like that. It's like you put the electrons at the top, and they just fall down the stairs. Right, Greta? Right. That's, you know about falling down stairs. Oh. <laughs> and then... Got it. And then... I'm trying to be topical. <laughs> and then... So the electrons just do that. They just start moving down the chain. Now, they have energy associated with them. So as they move down the chain, these proteins will use their energy to pull hydrogen ions through the membrane and to the intermembrane space. And actually, that'll happen three times. The electrons move down, hydrogen gets pulled out. At three different spots in the electron transport chain, hydrogen is pulled into the intermembrane space from the matrix. And that's the job of this NAD is done now. It goes, just bounces around, but it'll go back down here and accept more, maybe from the citric acid cycle. Yes? How many electrons does it take for a hydrogen to be for it to pull hydrogen out? Two electrons at a time are passed down the chain. Yeah. For each NADH that drops off electrons, three hydrogens get pulled out. So let's, let's take a look again. Here comes NADH, drops off electrons, drops off its hydrogen, 
The electrons fall down the chain. Hydrogen gets pulled out. Hydrogen gets pulled out. Hydrogen gets pulled out. Does that make sense? Do you want me to do it again? Electro NADH drops off electrons. Drops off a hydrogen. Electrons move down the chain. Hydrogen gets pumped out. Hydrogen gets pumped out. Hydrogen gets pumped out. How about FADH? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Like the limousine of electron carriers. It drops off electrons at the second protein in the chain, not the first. It has a different drop-off area. Drops off the electrons. Drops off the protons. The electrons go down the chain. Hydrogen gets pumped out. Hydrogen gets pumped out. Only two hydrogens get pumped out for the FAD electron. <laughs> you see what we're doing as we're moving the electrons down and the hydrogens are getting pumped out? You see what we're forming? What are we doing here? What do you see right here? Changing the pH. It does change the pH. It makes the pH what? Higher or lower? It makes it a lower pH because it's got all these hydrogen ions. But what we have here is called a concentration gradient. We've got a lot of hydrogens built up in this intermembrane space. And very few are on the inside because they got pumped out. Carter, you with me? Mm -hmm. Seem like you're staring away. So we got we build up a lot of hydrogens out here. We call this a concentration gradient. It's also called a proton gradient because these are protons. High number of protons on the outside, low number on the inside. So there is a way back in. There's only one way back in through the ATP synthase complex, just like uh, in photosynthesis, if you remember that from ninth grade. We'll talk about that. This is a protein ATP synthase. The ADP will stick to it, and P will stick to it. And then it just sits there and waits. It's an enzyme. And when the hydrogen ions come through, it causes this protein to actually spin. It has a portion at the bottom that spins around. And when that thing spins, it knocks together the ADP and P. So once again, ADP attaches, phosphate attaches, the hydrogen will go through, and ATP will be made. And that just happens for every hydrogen that gets pumped out, it comes back through and makes an ATP. Yeah? What can I say? ADP and P both connect to the ATP synthase. And the hydrogen comes through, and a TP is put together. And what happens to these ATPs? They go out through an ATP channel, and now they're in the cytoplasm of the cell. They'll just move out here, move out here. And so while this is happening, while these electrons are moving, these hydrogens come in, ATP gets made, ATP leaks out of the mitochondria, the mitochondria is making ATP. Wow. That's how mitochondrians make ATP. Wow. We call that chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis means these are chem it's, it's, you can think of it like these are chemicals and they move from high to low concentration just like water moves from high to low concentration and they come back through ATP synthase to make ATP it's also known as oxidative phosphorylation why is it called oxidative well 
Here's where breathing comes in. Do you want to know why you breathe? Yes. Why you breathe is pretty important, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Here's why you breathe. This is the only reason. You're breathing to get oxygen, O2, into your mitochondria. Oxygen can diffuse right through the, the membranes, goes right through the membranes because it's nonpolar and it's small. It goes right through the membranes and it goes to the end of the electron transport chain. And you see how there's a buildup of electrons here? The electrons that went down the chain, they have to have somewhere to go. And what, so that's why you breathe. You bring in oxygen, the oxygen accepts the electrons at the end of the chain and breaks apart. This oxygen accepts these electrons. Now it's become negatively charged. What will happen when these hydrogens come in, they'll stick to this oxygen that has the electrons. And guess what we form? Water, H2O. So if you look at the formula, for respiration, glucose plus oxygen, 6O2, yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. The CO2 was breathed out here. The H2O is formed right there. And the energy is used to turn ADP and P into ATP. And there's the ATP that's formed. Does this make any sense? Yes, sir. Well, let's look at the diagrams in the book. I just showed it to you there. You can see here, NADH drops off electrons. You can follow the movement of electrons if you follow these arrows. These, the, these are the electrons moving through the chain. And you can see a hydrogen gets pumped out there. And as the electrons move down, a hydrogen gets pumped out there. And as the electrons move down, hydrogen gets pumped out there. Remember I said three hydrogens get pumped out? Look at FADH. It drops off at the second protein, like I said. Question? Do three um, hydrogens get pumped out just from NADH? From one NADH, from the electrons moving down, three hydrogens get pumped out. From FADH2, the electrons being dropped off here, two hydrogens get pumped out. Yes? So on my stumps, one to two and two to three, it's moving through the phospholipid bilayer. Like, how do they move, like? The electrons? Yeah. They just jump from one protein to the next. OK. Again, it's a little like falling downstairs. The electrons, if they see it, if there's a lower energy level next to them, they'll be drawn to that one. And then they're here, and there's a lower energy level there, so they're drawn to that one. And then there's a lower energy level there, so they're drawn to that one. And they just keep moving. And their energy is used to pump these hydrogens out. The energy from the electrons is used to pump the hydrogens out. And here's half an O2 molecule attaches to two H's, that's one oxygen attaching to two H's formed water at the end. Is this making any sense? Yes, sir. Guess what this is? This is the ATP synthase. It says it right there. The hydrogen comes through. ADP and P hook together to make ATP. Here it shows the whole thing. Here's 
hydrogens pumped out, they come back in through an ATP synthase. The citric acid cycle sends NADH and FADH to the electron transport chain. You also get a NA, couple NADHs from glycolysis come in here. This is the inner membrane. This is the intermembrane space. This is the outer membrane. Um, that's tomorrow. I don't want to show you the video footage. I want you to do it on the board with with your own magnets. But wait, before you before you do that, let's go over the whole thing one more time. I mean, this explains a lot. This explains why you eat and why you breathe. You should be able to answer those questions now. If somebody says, why do you eat, what would you say? Because I'm hungry. What's a scientific way to answer the question? I need more materials for building cells. Relate it to this thing. What were you going to say? I said my mitochondria And where does the pyruvate come glucose. from? Glucose. Glucose. So here's why you eat. You need glucose for your mitochondria, for your cells to break down to produce ATP. And why do you need to breathe? Oxygen. Oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. That's why you breathe. So yes. if, I, if I stopped breathing, I would, the electron transport chain would stop? Exactly. Like if you hold your breath? Let's see who can stop. No, because you got a lot of air stored in your lungs. Mr. Willis. Yes. Can we see who can stop their electron transport chain for the longest? No. <laughs> What will happen is you will, um, if, you, if you couldn't breathe, you use up all the extra oxygen in your lungs, which will last you a couple minutes. I can only hold my breath up. And then <laughs> your, everything stops, you pass out. And your cells will quickly die without being able to make ATP. They can't repair themselves. Cells fall apart pretty quickly. Just a few minutes it takes. Do you know what helo cells are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll die too if they're deprived of oxygen. That's what we're, that's what we're reading about. Yeah. yeah? That's good. Okay. So one more time. Real quick. I'm doing this fast. Chan the man. Are you look, listening? Here we have glucose. It breaks down during glycolysis. You form NADH, two NADHs and two ATPs there. Right? Then, these are called what? Pyruvates. Pyruvates. They enter the mitochondrion. They stick to these coenzyme A's. And one of the car two, one, a carbon breaks off of each of them and has released the CO2. That forms a couple, an NADH here and an NADH there. Then, the coas attach their acetyl group to oxaloacetic acid, bam, and now we have citric acid, and that's broken down. And in that process, we form two, in, uh, three NADHs, an FADH, and an ATP, and these are given up the CO2. And this one will do it as well. It attaches its acetyl group, breaks off. Three NADHs, an FADH, and an ATP form. And these leave. 
All that NADH and FADH goes up here to the electron transport chain. They drop off their electrons on the chain. The electrons move down. Hydrogen gets pumped out and will come back in through the ATP synthase to which puts together ATP. There we go. And what happens to the electrons at the end of the chain? Water. That's where you breathe. Oxygen comes in, picks up those electrons. As these hydrogens come through the ATP synthase, they get picked up by the oxygen, and we form water. That's the rundown of the entire thing. Okay? I expect you to be able to show me this on your models. And, and y'all, when you draw your models on these boards, make a bigger mitochondrion. In other words, this one, you didn't leave much room in the, in the matrix here for the molecule. Make it more like my model. Go work on it right now. I'm going to come around. Each person should be able to do this for me. It's going to count as a quiz grade. And tomorrow we're gonna all do it. Yeah. Um, in the breakdown of pyruvate, yes. One molecule. I know it bends very far. Do all of those go to the mitochondria? Yeah. The glucose breaks down into two pyruvates. They both go into mitochondria.